Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and this is part two of the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking. Now in part one, which I will link to here, maybe? Maybe there? Oh, there it is. Part one, we talked about why you should smoke a pipe. And if you watched part one and you decided that yes, pipe smoking is indeed something you would like to do, in this part, we will discuss buying your first pipe. Something that's a little more complicated than, complicated than it might initially seem. You can buy a horrible pipe and spend way too much money on it. So I'm going to show you some of the options you may have, or you do have, and weigh some of the pros and cons when you're buying your first pipe. I think the best advice I can give you right off the bat is don't rush into it. Now, if you have a brick and mortar store, a brick and mortar tobacconist in your area, you need to go there and you need to look at the pipes. <clears throat> now, a lot of the times, just because of the relative popularity of cigar smoking versus pipe smoking, a lot of tobacco stores will either be pretty much head shops with lots of glass, glassware, glass pipes, with just a few token tobacco pipes, and maybe a humidor with cigars, or it will be focused almost entirely on cigars with just a few pipes here and there. But if you can find a store that has a pretty good selection of pipes with several different brands, try to go to that store and look at the pipes in person. It's very important to be able to touch and feel a pipe to see what you might actually enjoy. The mechanics of how a pipe smokes, that's very important. But almost more important, or at least equally important, is whether or not you enjoy the look and feel of a pipe, whether or not the pipe is cool, in your opinion. And there are so many different shapes, so many different finishes of pipes. This, for instance, would be considered a bent brandy. Um, and if you start getting into pipe shapes, you'll start understanding all the different nomenclature of different kinds of pipes. Um, and this is Peterson, which is a brand you will become very familiar with if you start looking into buying a pipe. But you wanna get a good idea in person of the different examples of pipes that are available. Touch them, feel them if they let you, uh, and just see what you think is kind of cool. And once you get an idea of that, don't buy one right off the bat in your tobacco store. Um, as much as I appreciate brick and mortar local stores, you're not always going to get the best deal there. Sometimes you will. I'm not saying you won't ever, but oftentimes you won't. So maybe you saw a couple pipes that you enjoyed, like the look of at your local store. That's when you write down those names, write down the shapes, the kind of finishes you liked, and you get on the internet and you start doing research. Now, when I first bought my first pipe, I was 18 years old, didn't know what the heck I was doing, didn't know anything about pipes or pipe smoking, and I bought this pipe. This is my very first pipe. I bought this in a brick and mortar store locally, and it's not branded, it just says Italy on it, and you'll find a lot of these that just say Italy. Uh, you're not going to be able to see any of that. But it's a basic briar pipe. This is considered a straight billiard with a saddle bit. Um, it's all right. I paid way too much for it. I think I paid close to $40 for it. And that was quite a while ago. And for a no-name pipe um, that smokes eh, decent, spent way too much on it. But it served me all right for you know, the years when I wasn't really an avid pipe smoker, I would just kind of yank this out every once in a while. And I bought it basically because it looked like a 50s dad pipe to me. But if you were a beginning pipe smoker now, you don't need to spend $40 on a pipe like this. You can find a much better pipe for probably a bit cheaper. So if you go to your local tobacco store, they have either basket pipes, which there's this trend, uh, if a major pipe manufacturer has pipes that have been rejected because of certain defects in the finish or maybe the drilling, there might be something wrong with the pipe, they won't put their name on it. And then they'll sell them at a discount to retailers and they'll throw them in a big, sometimes they literally have a big wicker basket with all these pipes thrown in there. 
Sometimes you can find a really good smoking pipe for very cheap. Sometimes you'll find something that's a piece of crap and you'll spend way too much money on it. So like I said, write down some of the brands, some of the finishes, some of the shapes you like and go online. And there's a couple websites you can look at. There's smokingpipes.com, pipesandcigars.com, um, there's Four Noggins, what else? There's quite a few different uh, retail websites where you can look at new pipes. And with the shapes and finishes and brands you had in mind, start looking on these retail websites, like on smokingpipes.com. Let's say you saw a Peterson pipe you really liked. You can go on to smokingpipes.com and then you can see that entire range of Peterson pipes. You can get an idea of what retail costs are and they're gonna be a little cheaper online than they would be in your brick and mortar store. And just exhaustively start researching. How much of these costs new? What's the range of different finishes I could get on this pipe? And also you'll be exposed to different brands that you may or may not have seen when you're in your local store. Basically what I'm trying to tell you to do is just gather as much information as possible together so you can make an informed decision. And this is something I didn't do initially because I didn't know any better. And it would have saved me buying some pipes that weren't really that great. Um, so once you've decided <clears throat> that you definitely want to buy a pipe, how much should you spend on the pipe that you're buying for your first pipe? This is a Rossi. It is kind of a Rhodesian shape. A little half bend there. And a Rossi is made by, well, not made by Savinelli, but it's a brand that's owned by Savinelli. Savinelli is another very major pipe manufacturer from Italy. And this is a very, kind of budget pipe model. But even that cost about $54. And this pipe smokes decently. Um, don't really have any complaints for it at all. There's nothing that's really gonna knock you out about this pipe, but it smokes okay. It's made fairly reasonable quality. And it's something that for a first tobacco pipe, for a first briar pipe, is not the bad, it's not the worst option in the world. Definitely a better option than this was. And I actually ended up paying about the same for this. There are also several brands that you may come across in your research when you're looking at pipes. And if I had to pick three brands that you should maybe focus on as someone who doesn't know a lot about different pipe brands yet, I'd say Peterson, which is an Irish pipe maker. Savinelli is an Italian pipe maker and Stanwell, which is a Danish pipe maker. Now, all of these companies are factory pipe makers, which means they're not, you know, limited production artisanal pipe makers, but they do have very high end lines, but they also have lower end or sort of beginner lines, which are very, very reasonably priced. Now, if I had to choose one pipe to buy right off the bat without knowing anything about pipes, I would probably pick a Savinelli because in my experience, they seem to be probably the best in terms of reliability. Um, I've had a lot of really nice Petersons, but I've had a lot of very high-end Petersons and they've all smoked really well. The lower end Petersons are maybe a little more hit and miss. Um, I'd say the same for the Stanwell, but for the Savinelli's, you can get a pipe for 70 bucks that smokes really well. You can look into some of their lines on smokingpipes.com. And if you wanna buy a decent tobacco pipe, $60, $70 new is right around where you're gonna spend. Um, now, there's also the estate pipe market. Now, estate pipe just basically is a fancy way of saying a used pipe. Almost every pipe I own, I've bought used. And for the most part, I've done pretty well. Like this pipe was used. I got this off of an estate pipe website. Someone who purchases, you know, lots of old pipes, cleans them up, gets them ready to sell again. And I got a reasonable price for this and it smokes well. I'm very happy with it. If you're gonna do this though, you need to kind of know what you're getting into. So let's say you see a pipe that you really enjoy. It's a used pipe, seems to be in good shape. What you want to do is write down the model number, 
if it has a model number, the shape, the finish, the brand, go to one of those websites I mentioned like Smoking Pipes or Pipes and Cigars and look at, see if you can find its equivalent new. You may not find the exact series or model now because often pipe makers don't make the same things year after year after year, but you pretty much get a good idea of what that pipe will go for new. Because if you're going on eBay, sometimes you'll pay more for an auction on a used pipe than you could get that same pipe new. Because sometimes the prices just get jacked up on eBay. So you want to make sure you're not getting taken advantage of. And people aren't going to purposely, well, not necessarily purposely try to take advantage of you. But I've seen pipes which to me for a fair retail would go for maybe 40 or $50, go for 80, 90, $100 on eBay just because there were a couple motivated buyers who were bidding on these things and it just drove the price way up. But you can also get great deals. Um, this pipe is a Peterson and this is a higher end Peterson. It's a deluxe, has a silver collar on it. Now this pipe was made in 1980, but I got it unsmoked. And the equivalent pipe, um, probably could sell for over $200 new, but I got this for, I think $70, including shipping from Ireland. So that was a great deal on an estate pipe. You won't always find those deals, but they are out there. And what you need to have on your side is knowledge. You need to know what that what the pipe should go for new. You need to also know what to look for in terms of the condition the pipe is in. There are certain things that won't matter that much. Certain things that are purely cosmetic, but then there are other things which could really affect the way a pipe smokes. And some of these things can be sort of covered over in pictures you need to know what you're doing. And maybe as a first time pipe smoker, I would stay away from the estate market for a little bit until you've had some experience. So, so, so far I've been talking about briar pipes, pipes made out of briar wood. Um, but there are other options. If you're not completely convinced that you want to be a pipe smoker and you don't want to put a huge amount of money down on a pipe that you may or may not enjoy smoking, there is the option of a corn cob pipe. And I don't have a corn cob with me at the moment to show you. Um, I guess I can show you an example of one. There we go. That was a Missouri Meerschaum. That's a brand that you'll hear of a lot if you're looking at corn cob pipes. They are, in most people's opinion, the best corn cob pipes, and they can go from anywhere from like $5 to $20 if you get a fancier one. But for five to 10 bucks, you can get a very decent smoking pipe. It's a corn cob, but it'll smoke really well. Um, it's not gonna last as long as a briar pipe because it's easier to burn the bowl out more, or it's you could burn the bowl out more easily on a corn cob than you would with a briar. And I personally, wouldn't really be caught dead wandering around in public with a corn cob pipe. That's just my own personal preference. But for someone who just wants to try out pipe smoking, they're fine. They smoke really well and they don't flavor the tobacco. I guess initially when you first smoke a corn cob, you might get a little corny taste, but that goes away fairly quickly. So that's another option for you. But as disjointed as this video has been, I will conclude with this. For me personally, if I had it to do all over again, with all the knowledge that I have now about pipes and pipe smoking and different brands and different finishes and different models and makes, if I had to purchase my first pipe, I would buy a Savinelli. That's the brand I would buy because to me, they seem to have the best track record on just pipes that smoke well, pipes that work. I would buy a lower end Savinelli, somewhere around $70, $80. I know that might sound like a lot, but it's a very decent price and you'll get a very decent smoking pipe for that price. So I'd go to smokingpipes.com, I'd go to Four Noggins, I'd go to any major online retailer of tobacco pipes. I'd search for Savinelli's and I'd just start going through their lines. And if I caught one that caught my eye or saw one that caught my eye, and a shape I liked or the finish I liked, 
I'd snatch that up for about 60 or 70 bucks. And I'd also say maybe if you're just starting out, start with a straight pipe like this. There's billiards, there's brandies, there's apples, there's all sorts of different shapes that you can find. But a straight shot from the bowl to the tip, that'll be the simplest and easiest to sort of get your head around when you're first starting to smoke a pipe. And we'll get into the mechanics of that in later videos. So I know this video is probably a bit disjointed. And if there's any particular question that I didn't answer in the video, put it in the comments and I'll try to answer it for you. Um, and I guess much of this is based on just personal preference. My pipe is out. But this is just what I've found. And if I had, as I said, the ability to go back in time and do it all again, I'd buy myself a decent mid-range Savinelli and save myself a lot of trouble and a lot of money on some of the pipes that I purchase first. So the next video in the series, the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking, we're going to discuss some of the first kinds of tobacco blends that you might want to try out. That'll be next. Make sure you subscribe. Check us out here on the Stuff and Things channel. I have been Bradley. You have been the audience. Thanks for watching.